Hi, fourth graders. It's Miss Reed from Citizenship Academy. Today we are on personal narratives lesson five. These are objectives for today. So today you'll continue reading the excerpt from How to Eat a Guava and identify sensory details. Remember we talked about those yesterday. They're very specific details using our five senses. Um, and you will also write a list of events in the order they happen about your food narrative. So again, the other teacher, Miss um, Kay, is going to read you this the rest of the story, and she's going to go over this vocabulary. But I do want to go over this vocabulary word because she doesn't really talk about it in the video. Um, chronological order. So chronological order is uh, it describes when the events are written in time order. So the order in which things happen. So if I were telling a story in chronological order, uh, order, I'm sorry, about my morning routine, the very first thing I would say is first I woke up. Then I hopped out of bed and I went to the bathroom. After that, I washed my hands and then I brushed my teeth. So you see how everything happens in exactly the order that it happened in real life. So today when you're writing something, I'll ask you to do it in chronological order. And I want you to tell it from time order, from the time things started to the time things ended. Because it makes things less confusing for your reader. Imagine if you're reading a story that was told all out of order. You would have no idea what actually happened in the story. Um, so it makes things less confusing. But for now, I'm going to pop Miss K on, and I will see you when she's done. This is lesson five of our personal narratives unit. Here is our vocab for today. A grimace is a noun, and it is a facial expression that indicates pain or distaste. So when your face is kind of like, like you tasted something gross or you don't like something. Um, castor oil is a noun, and it's a kind of vegetable oil, fragrant, an adjective, and it's having a strong, usually a pleasant or a good smell. Tempting is an adjective, and it means appealing or attractive. Um, all right, so this lesson is called Cooking Up Memories. We're going to reread some of the parts from last time from how to eat a guava. So this is from last lesson, how to eat a guava. As children, we didn't always wait for the fruit to ripen. We raided the bushes as soon as the guavas were large enough to bend the branch. A green guava is sour and hard. You bite into it at its widest point because it's easier to grasp your teeth. You hear the skin, meat, and seeds crunching inside your head, while the inside of your mouth explodes in little spurts of sour. You grimace, your eyes water, and your cheeks disappear as your lips purse into a tight O. That's such a good but sensory you detail. Another, and then another, enjoying the crunchy sounds, the acid taste, the gritty texture of the unripe center. At night, your mother makes you drink castor oil, which she says tastes better than a green guava. That's when you know for sure that you're a child and she has stopped being one. I said at the beginning that that was a reread. My mistake, that was not a reread. That was um, continuing. So again, there were some really good examples of sensory language in that passage, especially the one where it was like my, like, um, it was like exploding, the sound was exploding in my ears as I was chewing. Like, I can imagine that, like, because I've had that happen before when I eat crunchy food. So very descriptive, like you can really visualize it. So what you're going to do right now is you are going to use your brainstorm food idea from yesterday. So remember yesterday, I'm actually looking at yesterday's lesson, that's why I'm looking over here, but yesterday I gave you five topics that you could pick from to write about um, the food that you wanted to write about, right? So your topics were the first time I ate my food, I ate my favorite food, I'm sorry, a time that eating something made me sick, the first time I ate my least favorite food, the best or worst meal I ever ate at a restaurant, or a very messy eating experience. And yesterday I had you write those in the sensory detail chart um, with as much sensory details as you could remember. But 
today, what you're going to do is you're going to list these, you're going to list that situation out, that memory, and you're going to break it down into a series of events in chronological order. So the order in which they happened. Um, so the very first thing that happened, you would be writing here, like I walked into the restaurant, um, details, things that you, you, like I'm pointing at my screen, like you could see it. Um, what did you see here? Smell, taste, or touch, like at that exact event. So you're breaking down things um, that were exact order they happened. They can include what you were others thought, said, or did during that entire time. So when you go on Seesaw, sorry, let me click on it. When you go on Seesaw, this is what you'll see. You obviously saw this already for the lesson, but this is the template that you will edit. So these are just the directions. Again, it says use your brainstorm food idea from yesterday to break it down into a series of events. So that one situation, that one memory that you wrote about yesterday, you're going to break it down, every little thing that happened during that situation, and you're going to give as many details as you can about that situation. Then this will this will look larger on your um, computer too, but you're going. This is what you're going to do. You're going to either use the text box or you can write if you can write neatly as possible. The details. You could also record yourself um, describing each of the events. But I really need you to write down and type out each event. The details. You could record yourself and whatnot. But the events you really need to write out so that when you write, you go back and you write your personal narrative. This is a lot more easier for you to remember. So I'm really looking forward to seeing all of these um, and looking forward to seeing.